Many of the processes that take place inside our cells and generally in nature sometimes actually have negative effects and the electron transport chain is no exception. So even though the electron transport chain is very useful to our cells because it allows us to establish a proton gradient across the inner membrane of the mitochondria which ultimately allows us to generate these high energy ATP molecules, the electron transport chain also sometimes produces these harmful byproduct molecules that can cause damage to our cells. And because these harmful byproduct molecules are actually oxygen derivative molecules, we call them reactive oxygen species. Now, before we actually talk about these molecules in slightly more detail, let's remember what happens under normal conditions in complex four of the electron transport chain. So, Remember the entire point of the electron transport chain is to actually take those high energy electrons produced by creating the NADH molecules and FADH2 molecules and using those electrons to create a proton gradient. And the final except of electrons is diatomic oxygen. And in complex four of the electron transport chain, a total of four electrons and four protons are combined into diatomic oxygen to completely reduce that diatomic oxygen into water molecules. And water molecules are harmless to the cell and the water molecules can be used in a variety of different ways. But under certain conditions, the oxygen is only partially reduced into some type of molecule. So if oxygen, for instance, only gains one electron, we form a radical molecule known as the superoxide anion. If it accepts two electrons, so one and two, we form the peroxide molecule. In fact, when we discussed complex four, we said that a peroxide bridge is formed between the copper B atom and the heme A3 group. Now these two types of molecules are very very reactive and, in, and if somehow complex 4 releases either this molecule or this molecule they can cause damage to the components of our cells because of their reactivity. So they can react with things like nucleic acids so DNA molecules or they can react with other proteins and enzymes and, and they can disrupt their functions and that can cause damage to our cells. So we see that in complex four under normal conditions, when a total of four electrons are transferred to diatomic oxygen, we form two water molecules which are harmless to the cell. But if oxygen only gains one or two electrons, this can lead to the production of molecules such as superoxide ions or peroxide ions. And if these are released by complex four, that can cause damage to our cells. And because of that, we call these reactive oxygen species. They're highly reactive and they, and they can cause damage to the cells of our body. So ROS stands for reactive oxygen species. Now, of course, the electron transport chain isn't a perfect process and these molecules will in fact form. And that's exactly why, as we'll see in just a moment, we have enzymes that can actually control the formation of these harmful byproducts. So generally speaking, if these reactive oxygen species produced are not actually controlled, ROS can actually react with cell components and cause something called oxidative damage. In fact, it's oxidative damage that is linked to the process of aging. So we age partially as a result of these reactive oxygen species. On top of that, oxidative damage has also been linked to a variety of different types of medical conditions and medical abnormalities. For instance, things like ischemia, diabetes, cervical cancer, liver damage as a result of alcohol overconsumption, um, and emphysema and many other disease has been linked to this process of oxidative damage. The fact that these peroxide and superoxide anions react with components of our cells such as DNA and proteins and that can actually cause detrimental effects. Now, there are many different ways by which the cells of our body can actually destroy or convert these 
uh, peroxide and superoxide molecules into safer molecules. Now, the first thing that I should mention is complex four, which actually produces a peroxide bridge as an intermediate molecule, doesn't simply let go of these molecules. So these complexes, these enzymes, which basically reduce things like oxygen molecules, actually hold on to these molecules very, very tightly. And they only let go under certain conditions. So we see that complex four holds the oxygen and its derivatives very tightly. It only releases it upon the conversion of these molecules into safer molecules, as in this case, into water. But for the few ROS molecules that are released in the process, so for instance, when we form the peroxide in complex four, if the complex four accidentally releases the peroxide, we do have certain methods that our cells use to actually help us remove these harmful molecules from our body. And these harmful, uh, and these methods includes using these special protective enzymes to find, to locate these ROS molecules and to basically convert the ROS molecules into something that are safer. So let's discuss two very important types of protective enzymes used by our human cells and many other eukaryotic cells. So we have an enzyme known as superoxide dismutase and an enzyme known as catalase. In addition, we also have many different types of vitamins used by our body that actually allows us to control the amount of these reactive oxygen species that we find inside our cells. So let's begin by focusing on superoxide dismutase. So this is the enzyme that basically locates and converts superoxide radical species like the one basically discussed right here. So we, this is the general reaction that basically is catalyzed by superoxide dismutase. But as we'll see in just a moment, the superoxide dismutase that is used by our cells basically carries out a two-step process. But this is the general process. So we essentially take two of these superoxide anions, we use two H plus ions, we react them to form a single hydrogen peroxide molecule, which is actually itself an unsafe molecule and we'll see what is done with this in just a moment but we also form this diatomic oxygen and this diatomic oxygen is in fact a safe molecule now inside eukaryotic cells such as cells of our own body we actually have two forms of superoxide dismutase one form depends on manganese and the other form depends on copper and zinc atoms so the manganese containing this mutase is found in the mitochondria of our cells, while the copper and zinc dependent this mutase is actually found in the cytoplasm of our body. But either one of these two enzymes basically catalyze the following two-step process. So in process one, we have the oxidized version of this mutase that reacts with a single superoxide ion. So it essentially releases a diatomic oxygen and it keeps a single electron so that we oxidize or we reduce it into the reduced this mutase version. Now the reduced this mutase then reacts with another superoxide anion as well as with two H plus ions. And this allows us to basically oxidize this reduced this mutase back into the oxidized version. So we regenerate that enzyme and we also form this hydrogen peroxide. Now, Hydrogen peroxide in itself is also a very reactive molecule and it can be very dangerous. And that's exactly where the second enzyme comes into play. Our cells also contain an enzyme known as catalase and catalase is actually a protein that contains a heme group. And what this does is it takes two of these hydrogen peroxide molecules, reacts them to form two water molecules as well as a single diatomic oxygen molecule and these two molecules are completely harmless they're safe inside our cells so these two molecules can be used in a variety of different ways for instance the oxygen can be used by the electron transport chain to generate ATP molecules and water molecules can be used in a variety of different types of processes for instance hydrolysis processes 
Now, one last thing I'd like to mention is the fact that exercise, so if we continually exercise on a daily basis, that can actually be very beneficial. And one benefit of exercising is that exercising actually increases the concentrations, the levels of these enzymes, protective enzymes inside our cells. So as we exercise, we increase the levels of superoxide, this mutase, and catalase, and catalase because exercising actually increases the likelihood that we're going to produce these reactive oxygen species. So we see that exercise increases the amount of protective enzymes found in our cells such as superoxide dismutase which, which can increase our cells ability to actually find and remove these harmful reactive oxygen species.